and welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Are you tired? Are you short of breath? Are you peaked? Do people say you're pale? Do you look in the mirror and say, hey, I look a little pale and I'm short of breath and I don't feel good. So are you tired, short of breath and pale? If so, you could have anemia. We're going to be finding out what is anemia. What are the symptoms of anemia? How do we diagnose this? And what can we do to get it better? My guest is Dr. Michael Bernard. Dr. Bernard is a board certified internal medicine specialist, and he looks at every patient every time he walks into the room to see if he thinks they have anemia. A lot of information for you. I'm Dr. Robert Overholt, I'll be your host, and together Dr. Bernard and myself will be finding out about anemia. We're talking with Dr. Michael Bernard, board certified internal medicine, and we're talking about anemia. What is it? What does it look like? What are the symptoms does it cause? And how do you make the diagnosis? Mike, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Hey, glad to be here. So tell me, what is anemia? Anemia is when you have a lack of red blood cells in your body. So what are red blood cells? Red blood cells are the things that carry oxygen around. And so you need those red blood cells to have oxygen. And what does the oxygen do? The oxygen feeds our brain, our kidneys, our yeah. muscles. So, so without it, we're in big, big trouble. Big trouble. We get tired, short of breath, we don't feel good. Absolutely. So it, what the red blood cells, uh, we get a lack of those with anemia. Where do those red blood cells go? What makes them get low? Well, normally your red blood cells break down and you just build new ones. So in females, when you're young, you can lose those through your menstrual cycles. So a menstrual cycle would be one cause of anemia. That's right. Do women, do menstruating women in that age, do they, do they recognize, do they, does their doctor look for anemia? Do they you do. look for anemia? I do, I look for anemia for them. Uh, and so when you look f for s physical exam of anemia, what do you look for when you see a patient in your office? Well, you, you can look and you can see they look pale. Their, their eyelids will be, you can see the discoloration. It looks more pale and your hands also, instead of being pink, it's more of a off-white, yellowish color. Yeah, it, it, you, when they walk in the room, they just look pale, don't they? That's right. When you pull down on the lower eyelid, what does the conjunctiva look like? That's right, and it doesn't look like yours, right? It looks more of a pale, the redness is gone. Yeah, it's almost, so. wh almost white. That's so, right. So back to those red blood cells, the causes, what can happen, menstruation can be one, another cause. So as we get older, our red blood cells should not be going down. We should have a nice normal level. And so then we, if we are anemic, then we start looking at common causes. One of the worst things that we can suffer is if you lose it through your stomach tract. So either through your stomach from an ulcer or a colon cancer. So colon cancer or GI tract then. That's right, GI tract. Is one of the places you can, have you ever seen anybody vomit up blood? Gosh, That's really gross sounding. Terrible. To, the, Looks the, like coffee grounds, right? Yeah, yeah. and it just sort of, <laughs> some, sometimes it's really terrifying to see. Yeah. And it makes you think, I better do something real quick. But let's go back to that red blood cell. Let's talk about what's it made of? Well, the red blood cell is um, made of uh, haptoglobin, so, which is the molecule that carries the iron. So, so it carries iron and does it produce hemoglobin then? So it does, it produces hemoglobin. So what is hemoglobin? So hemoglobin's a protein that carries iron through your blood and it's the direct protein that carries the iron itself. And it, where does the oxygen fit into so, hemoglobin? Yeah, if, so it connects to the hemoglobin and they're inside the red blood cells and that goes through your body and delivers the oxygen. So if we breathe in oxygen to the lungs, how does that oxygen in the lungs have an affinity to jump on the hemoglobin. Yeah, so, so it, 
through their properties. It jumps on there, and then the haptoglobin carries the oxygen and delivers it to the organs where it needs to be. And so, when it grabs the oxygen, what does it get rid of? Carbon dioxide. And where does that come uh, from? Well, carbon dioxide is produced in our bodies, and then we excrete it through our lungs. So, uh, so, so, so. the oxygen jumps on, and in the carbon. lungs, we blow off the carbon dioxide. That's right. And so if we didn't do that, we'd be in big trouble. That's right. So if something's wrong with the hemoglobin and it can't allow oxygen to jump on, what would, what would that what would it be? Would that be anemia? That would be anemia. Yeah. So, so if it doesn't would, function properly, the red blood cell has to has to work good. Yes. What's the hematocrit? We've got a hemoglobin. That's red blood cells, and you've got uh, iron and that, and haptoglobin, and you've got a red cell. So what is the hematocrit? You got? So the hematocrit is when you spin down blood. And it's the How do you spin it down? Well, it's in the back body. Back in the old days, we used to spin it in a centrifuge. You know, we'd take a tube of blood, <laughs> spin it down, and then you, it was the percentage of red blood cells in the blood volume. So if you if you were to draw blood from me, put it in a tube, spin it around, spin around real around. fast in a centrifuge, it would layer out with what? That's right, it layers out. And you've got serum, you've got white blood cells, and the red blood cells are the ones that we measure and that's your hematocrit, it's a percentage. Okay, it's how much hemoglobin is compared to the total hemoglobin, uh, white blood cells and plasma. That's right. Okay, so what's a normal hemoglobin in men and women? So a normal hemoglobin in a female is a little lower than men, so in a hemoglobin should be between 13 and 16 in a woman, between 14 and 17 in a man. So a little bit higher in the red-blooded American male. That's right. Uh, and the reason is because they're losing blood that men are not in their menstrual cycle. So what if a man's hemoglobin is low? It's not 14 to 16 or 18 grams. What if it's 12? What do you start thinking about? Well, that's when you have to start thinking, where did the blood go? go. Did we lose it through the urine? Have you donated blood? Are you losing it through the GI tract? Are you not making enough? Is not the bone enough. there not working? We're going to get into that in a minute. So for females, it's what numbers? So 13 to 16. 13 to 16. And men, it's what numbers? 14 to 17. Okay. So people, should they know what their hemoglobin hematocrit is? Absolutely. And should the doctor tell them, hey, I got your blood count, your hemoglobin, was that? That's your red blood cells. And they should know if they it's normal or not. When you draw blood from me and you see the results of the hemoglobin from the laboratory, if it's low, do they say low? Do they tell you they give they cheat for you? <laughs> they do cheat for you. There's a big L beside it. Yeah, that so means that L for us. low. That's right. And, and that's really important because you know, there's so many laboratory data that comes in front of the doctor that. If something is flagged, uh, if it's beeping, if the computer says, hey, look here, then you look there and you say, oh, the hemoglobin is low. In men, it's below 14, and women, it's below... Yeah, below 13. Yeah. And, so, and that's one of the ones that, when you get your list of labs, a lot of times you'll see a few things that are off, but hemoglobin and hematocrit are two that you should definitely f address with your physician. So if it's low, that's a sign you've got anemia, and then you start looking at the causes of that and what can cause it. Are there a lot? Are there different causes in adults of anemia? There are, and that's what we're going to be talking about when we come back. What are some of the causes that can make your hemoglobin and hematocrit be low? And we'll talk a little bit more about what is the low hematocrit number. You got to know those numbers. You're going to want to stay tuned for finding the answer. We're talking with Dr. Michael Bernard, board certified internal medicine specialist. We're talking about anemia. We've been talking about red blood cells, hemoglobin. We didn't talk enough about hematocrit. That was my fault. We'll talk about that just a little bit. And so what are some of the signs and symptoms we're going to be talking about and the causes of anemia? So what's the hematocrit, Mike? So the hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells in the serum. Normal for females and men? Yeah, so normal for is 36 to 46 in females, 50 to 40 to 50 in men. 
So you look at hemoglobin, hemoglobin and hematocrit together and they'll be low and it'll say L and it flags it and so you say, boy, I, I need to be sure that I'm looking for anemia. And the patient looks peaked and pale when they walk in your room. So what are the signs and symptoms of somebody with anemia? Right, so weakness, fatigue, why are they weak? Because they don't have enough oxygen. They, and they can't, need that. They We've do. They that. feel short of breath. So the weak fatigue. Why are they tired? So they same not, thing. Same thing. And they give they give out when they exert themselves. They just don't have the energy to walk, to run, to do the normal things they do. They feel their heart rate pounding because they're not getting enough oxygen. Young person? Even in young people. Yeah. So, so. if they're, they're anemic, if somebody comes and says, "I get short of breath with activity and my heart races." When the heart races, can people feel that? You can feel it. Yeah. It feels, like it's, feels like you're running when you're not running. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great, great uh, description of that. So you feel like you've been running a, a race and you're short of breath, but you haven't been doing anything. That is a sign and symptom of anemia. What else? Well, sometimes you can even have the desire to eat ice chips. What's that called? So it's pica or pica. Um, so. pica probably <laughs> pica. Um, why do they want to eat the ice? Nobody so, knows. No one knows. Yeah, so. but, but if you see somebody comes in and says, I'm eating ice all the time. Or if a viewer says, I go to the refrigerator and I eat more ice than anybody in the whole neighborhood. It may be anemia this guy. Is that, that correct? That's right. Uh, is there a special kind of anemia with are there different kinds of anemia? So there's different kinds. So there's iron deficiency anemia, and then there's hemolytic anemia where your body eats up the red blood cells. There's anemia of chronic disease where your bone marrow just doesn't make enough red blood cells. Wow. So, so when we talk about iron deficient anemia, that's what you were trying to teach me when you said you could lose blood from the GI tract. That may be from the stomach, or it may be colon cancer, or it may be the colon in itself. Is that right? That's right. So uh, when we have iron deficiency anemia, we look for blood loss. Uh, and the mo most common causes of blood loss? Well, let's hope that people are just donating blood. <laughs> so, but the ones we worry about, and fem the ones we worry about are can cancer and ulcers. Um, sometimes in the stomach tract, you get these AV malformations. What's an AV malformation? So, yeah, so it's an artery and a vein connected. So arterial venous malformation, and, and those just bleed. So that's not too worrisome. Sometimes it can cause anemia and it makes you weak, but it's not something that is life-threatening most of the time. Uh, we've gone through the appearance, we've gone through iron deficiency, uh, you said hemolytic anemia, a red blood cell just doesn't, doesn't live long? That, well, your body's actually breaking down the red blood cells. Those, that's a more unusual type of anemia. Usually that's associated with people who are fairly ill. Sometimes medications can cause it, but that would be a, a more unusual cause of anemia. Is there something called an autoimmune hemolytic anemia where yeah, the, the body attacks its own red blood cells? It is. Yeah, Let's that's where it, that. it, so yeah. it can be immunology that's doing that also. Right. So you've got to be aware of all of that. And there's certain other laboratories that we look for to give us hints so that we can figure out what's causing it. Like what? So, well, one of the things that we look for is to see if your haptoglobin is low, that means your body is breaking down red blood cells and one of the more common things that you'll see on your printout is something called an MCV. And the MCV is a measure of how big your red blood cells are. So red cells can be different in size? Right, and one of the things we haven't talked about are big red blood cells. What's the, that's called or what? A, so, a yeah, big red blood cell? A big, big red, what is that megablastic red? anemia. And, and that's when you have like a B12 deficiency. That will make the, a, a vitamin deficiency will make the red cells, blood cells get bigger. Big. That's and, right. And, and that's really, so what else do you look for if you've got a B12 deficient, pernicious anemia? Pernicious anemia. Well, we see pernicious anemia, red, your B12 levels will be low. Sometimes your folic acid levels will be low. Um, the red blood cells will be big. We also see that same type picture in people who drink too much alcohol. Okay, so the same thing can make somebody B12 deficiency and sometimes you said folic acid deficiency? That's right. But you get that in cereal, so sometimes it can hide, it can fake the doctor off. 
That's right. Is that right? <laughs> That's absolutely right. It still shows up in the lab, though, and, and flags most sure of the time. Does. That's we, right. We hope it does. Uh, other causes? So thyroid disorders can cause you to be anemic. Yeah, overactive, underactive. So both can. So, that's so how, do, how does that happen? Overactive thyroid, how does it make somebody anemic? Do so we know? We, we really don't know exactly, but we believe that the red blood, the iron, doesn't go to the red blood cells. It actually goes to different types of cells in the body. And if somebody's got so, low thyroid, have hypothyroid, hypothyroid really sluggish, this yeah, then your body's just not producing the metabolism down. It's not, it's so. not doing a good job, the machine, of making the. Where are the red blood cells made, Mike? They're in the bone marrow. Uh, so they come from the bone marrow. Red blood cells. I think I remember saying uh, they live about 56 days, and so that Constantly bone marrow has got to re re reproduce that sort of thing. Um, go through the symptoms again. I, I mean the signs: paleness, right. paleness. So uh, hand, the nails, hands, nails, eyes. Pulses. Pulses are elevated. Heartbeat you know, is. Heart rates elevated. Yeah, all, all of that. Are, so that gives you a classic sign. But there are other things that can do the, the, make those same symptoms. So the lab work, you get hemoglobin hematocrit, and it will be flagged that they're low, and it makes it be a hint. Then we've gone through the causes. Uh, how's the diagnosis made? So, well, when you have the low red blood cells, that's you're going to be diagnosed with anemia. Then we look at the MCV level to tell us, is it elevated along the lines of B12 deficiency? Is it low, like iron deficiency? Is it normal, which is more of a chronic disease inflammation picture? And then we do further testing. It directs us in that direction. Okay, so if it's a, a small red blood cell, microcytic, uh, you're looking for the blood loss kind. Of That's the right. We're looking for iron point. levels. Yeah. Not, so, uh, so how do you look for that? What we do, do you that do? through blood test again, and then generally we'll also look into the stool and make sure you're not losing it in the stool because. I, the, what does the stool? Look, I'm sorry to interrupt. What, how, what does the stool look like when there's blood in the yeah. stool? So, black stools are a sign of of blood loss, and it's that you know the red blood cells, the iron turns black. Pepto-Bismol can also do that. That's right, because so. it's, got, it's got some iron in there. That's right. So and so if you've got, that. how black is the stool? It's black, black. Black, black, black. It's black. Shoe polish That's black. That's right. <laughs> really black. So the things that can hide that are if you're taking iron by mouth or. Iron by mouth, if you eat a lot of red meat, which we hope you aren't, <laughs> um, and Pepto-Bismol. So. so that melana, hemoglobin and hematocrit, do you have to do GI tests? Do you have to do upper GI, lower GI, looking for blood? That's right. So if you're losing blood through your stomach tract, we generally look in the lower and in the upper to look for a cause. So after you've done all of this, if you've got the hemoglobin hematocrit, you've looked through the causes, can you pretty much find the cause in most people that have anemia? In most people. 90% of the people we can find a cause. And when you find the cause, and we'll go through each one, is there treatment available for that? There is treatment available for almost always, especially now. And that's what we're gonna be talking about when we come back. If there's anemia, if the lab shows that you've got anemia, Dr. Bernard finds the cause, and then there's treatment for each one, we're gonna go through the treatment in four or five minutes when we come back. We're talking with Dr. Michael Bernard, board certified internal medicine specialist. We're talking about anemia. That's where you don't have enough red blood cells. A lot more causes than we thought. It could be that you're not making enough or it could be what you got is lost through a bleed or it could be the red blood cell is just weak and it just breaks down and you lose it. There are blood tests that will tell you what your hemoglobin and your hematocrit are. Men have a little bit more red blood cells than women. Women lose a little bit more. Men have a little lower hematocrit. So hemoglobin and hematocrit, uh, talk to about those with your doctor. Uh, and then we're talking about the different causes. It could be uh, what we're talking about now. So Mike, what are some causes of anemia? Well, 
there's iron loss. Uh, so how do we treat that? Iron loss, generally we replace the iron. And you can do that through oral ways, through tablets, or you can do it intravenously if you're very anemic or if you can't tolerate the oral supplementation. So if you take iron by mouth, what does that do to the stool? It makes it nice and dark. It makes black. it black, black like shoe polish. That's called melanin. So right. the first thing the doctor's going to ask you if they, if she's, I've got black tarry stools and you should say, you say, well, are you on Pepto-Bismol or iron? That's right. And then if not, you got to get to work. That's right. B big time. Um, how do you diagnose uh, one of the other causes of anemia? So, well, there's the B12 deficient, the large red fluffy cells that the are MCV, large. You the said MCV, was big. that's that right. Mean and corpuscular we, volume. And we can replace that through B12. So, uh, how do you how do you take B12 uh, by mouth? We don't absorb B12 real well, so we generally do that through the muscles through an injection once a month. And once a month. Once a month. I normally load people up. I give them an injection once a day to build them up, usually for a week, and then once a month. And then the, you can also, you can do it subcutaneously. You can do it up through your nose. You can do an injection through your nose, uh, like a little squirt, or you can take it underneath your mouth sublingually. So there's lots of ways that we can replace the, the iron. How long does it take the anemia to go away if you're taking iron by mouth? Well, if you're taking iron by mouth, it's going to be several weeks. Generally, I tell people three to four weeks. Uh, and after three to four weeks, what does that person feel like? What's it like? Yeah, well, I'm sure it's got to be such a, a wonderful feeling to have your energy back and to not feel like you're tired all the time. Dr. Bernard, you must be the greatest doctor in town because I, when I came in, I just couldn't do anything. I just felt, and now I feel like I can get up and go and go do what they want to do. That's right. That must be a great feeling. I, I believe it must be. Okay, so that's iron for iron deficiency. That's B12 for pernicious anemia, of big right. red blood cells. Uh, what other kinds of, what about uh, sickle cell anemia? Well, sickle cell anemia, fortunately, we don't see very often. Yeah, almost so, never anymore. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, but it, when you have a sickle cell patient, we have treatments, we put you in the hospital, we give you lots of steroids and we stop that reaction. So, and so there's so, treatment for there's treatment any for kind of blood loss anemia. That's right. Uh, anything I'm leaving out as far as the treatment of anemias and the different kinds? Well, some people develop kidney disease. And when you develop kidney disease, your, your kidneys make a, a special protein that goes to your bone marrow to tell you, look, it's time to make those red blood cells. What's that one so, called? Erythropoietin, so. Erythropoietin. So. That's right. And that tells the bone marrow to get to work. Get moving. Yeah. And so when we have kidney disease, we don't get that signal to the bone marrow. So in kidney patients, we can actually give injections once again, either subcutaneous or intravenous, and it'll stimulate the bone marrow to make those red blood cells again. So when somebody's got anemia and you have to treat it, there's almost treatment for every kind of anemia. That's right. And you can make the patient feel better. And if you're short of breath and your heart's pounding and you can't do what you used to do, then there's hope that your red blood cells will come back to normal. Absolutely. And that person will be able to live a normal, active realm. You know, that's what makes doctors want to go into medicine. And make people feel better. Yeah, Absolutely. it really is. So it must be a great feeling. Any example of somebody who had a real low hemoglobin and got better, and what did they come back and tell you, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. I, I just saw somebody last week, and she had terrible anemia. She was a young person from her menses that was losing blood, and we gave her an IV infusion of iron, and three weeks later, she felt wonderful. And isn't that a great thing? Yeah. Dr. Bernard, th she said, thank you so much. You saved my life or you made me feel different. Um, we need to understand, and I need to be sure and tell everybody, that part of staying healthy and having a good hemoglobin hematocrit, not having anemia, is exercising. Does exercise help the red blood cells? It, it does. So yeah. you want to preserve good 
heart function, lung function, and keep your kidneys healthy. And you gotta eat properly, you gotta have enough iron or enough B12 in your diet. As we get older, sometimes that b 12 is not absorbed, so we have to look for that in That's adults. Right. And then we've gotta get seven and a half hours sleep. If we're not sleeping well, does that cause ulcers, heartburn, acid indigestion, GI blood loss. Yeah, absolutely. So it's important that you exercise, that you eat right, you get seven and a half hours sleep. But what about laughter? What does that do in preventing anemia? Well, I think laughter is you know, a wonderful medicine. What do they say about medicine and laughter? It's, uh, it's, it's it maybe the best, the best cure. That's laughter right. may be as good as the doctor. Uh, a laugh a day keeps the doctor away and said an apple a day keeps it. So from my standpoint, as far as laughter goes, it's one of the most important things we can do. And when we look at studies on laughter, it shows that the immune system works better, that people have less colds, that they feel better, that they act better, that they sleep better, that the people around them are happier. I, that I, if I don't have enough sleep, I get grumpy and I get mad and that makes other people have ulcers. And so uh, getting that laughter in your life is what really uh, makes people happy and makes them feel good and it makes them stay happy. Thanks for coming to the Dr. Bob Show. Hey, thanks, Dr. Bob. I appreciate it.